Enjoy this free preview from My Outdoor TV. With the largest library of outdoor shows, we are the home of the adventurous, the champions, the legends. My Outdoor TV, try us free. When it comes to shooting handguns, recoil is an unavoidable fact of life. This week we're at Gunside Academy and we're going to be looking at some ways to mitigate and control recoil so you can become a better defensive handgunner. So everybody talks about cartridges all the time, usually in terms of stopping power, but obviously calibers really govern recoil. Mm -hmm. The more powerful cartridge you have, the more recoil you're going to get. It's physics. There's no getting around it. Nope. But it's one way you can select a gun that's more suitable for you and what you need. So mm -hmm. at the lower end of the popular centerfire spectrum, you have the 380. Mm -hmm. And it's gotten a lot more popular in recent years. I have it here in Ruger LCP Max. And it's a relatively light recoiling cartridge. Easy enough pretty much for anyone to control. Yeah. And shoot in a nice light carry gun at the opposite end of the spectrum. <laughs> The cartridge has long been considered the gold standard for auto cartridges in terms of defensive use, and that's the 45 ACP. And it is a big step up from our little 380. Uh, here I have it in the Springfield XDM Elite 3.8 Compact. And for a 45, this is a relatively small. That means you are going to get. Oh boy considerably more recoil, but still controllable, mm -hmm. especially, you know, if you've got, you know, some experience with shooting and the gun fits your hand. Mm -hmm. That flare on the Megwell there, I think that helps you. That really helps. Too. It does. It mm -hmm. does. So now revolver shooters, of course, they have it best. Yeah. So this is a Taurus 605. It's chambered in 357. So first I'm going to shoot it with 38 specials. Anybody can control that yeah. with a little bit of work. You know, it's got these rubber grips on them. Really kind of uh, makes the gun sit in your hand the way you want it to. Those hogs are known to kind of absorb a little bit of the recoil too. And they really do. But if you don't feel like the 38 is going to get it for you, <laughs> now this is 357 Magnum. Yeah. A little bit more with that one, huh? Well, and you know, there's the old saw, oh, practice with 38s, but keep 357s, you know, for defense. I think that's bunk. Yep. You know, shoot whatever you can control. If you can only control 38s because the recoil is fine, shoot those. If yep. plus P's work for you, shoot those. If you can handle 357 in a really lightweight, small revolver, by all means, go for it. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, of course, caliber is a big aspect of uh, recoil, but so is the size. You know, these are two really common uh, sizes for a nine millimeter. So I've got the Springfield Garrison. So this is a nine millimeter, 1911 frame. It's heavy. It's actually over twice as heavy as mm -hmm. this 365 SIG over here, um, but it shoots just phenomenally. There's no recoil. So I can shoot it relatively fast and controllable. Here, lighter, like I said, half the weight of the Garrison is the 365, and this is my carry gun here. So I have some experience with it, but there's definitely a significant amount of recoil with this smaller gun. So it takes a little practice to make sure that I'm absorbing it. Yeah. 
But, um, you know, when Rich and I come back, we're gonna take a look at some techniques to manage recoil. In a self-defense situation, cover can save your life. Wouldn't it be great to have cover with you at all times? Well, now, thanks to Premier Body Armor and their Vertex Commuter Sling 2.0 bundle, you can have just that. This pack here is a 17-liter pack that's very well designed and it's rugged. You can carry everyday items, such as a laptop, and you have a lot of different uh, pockets here for different accessories, but what really sets this bag apart is it enables you to have very quick access to life-saving gear, and it is very customizable. In this case, I have my SIG 365 here. I have a light, a knife, and even a spare uh, magazine. You can customize this. It comes with things like this that Vertex calls tactigami, like tactical origami. You just simply place this panel down and it accepts any type of molly accessory. This here is just a larger version of the holster that I formed here for this 365. So this would work for a larger pistol. But what's great about this is it actually contains a ballistic panel in here and this comes with the kit, a ballistic panel. This is 10 by 17. It's rated 3A, so it's the same type of body armor I wear at work as a police officer, and it's gonna be in front of your vital organs. It's designed to stop handgun rounds. So let's put some rounds into it and see how it performs. All right, for demonstration purposes, we've taken the ballistic panel out of this and set it up downrange. I'm gonna show you how to draw from this pack and we'll see if the panel performs as advertised. All I'm gonna do is reach down here and grab this rapid access tab and I can immediately pull this here. If the panel was in here, this would now protect my vitals. I'm gonna open this pack up here, reach in here, draw my pistol and get some rounds on that target. It fell off what we had it propped on but the water bottle behind it is still intact. So I would say it performed as advertised. With an MSRP of just $355, the Premier Body Armor Vertex Pack is affordable peace of mind. Guns and Defensive Weapons is brought to you by Fioki. Handguns and Defensive Weapons is brought to you by Keltec. Courtney, you and Scott talked about the different uh, attributes from various handguns as far as controlling recoil. Since I'm introducing a new pistol to the mix right now, let's talk just a little bit about this. This is the SIG Custom Works P320, and this really has a lot going for it as far as being able to control recoil. First of all, it's a heavy pistol. It enables me to get a full firing grip, and it enables me to get pretty high up on this back strap here with this beaver tail. It also has a pretty aggressive grip texture. All of these things will help me control recoil. But really, recoil control has a lot to do with technique. And what you're really striving to do is have 360 degree inward pressure on this, uh, on this pistol. That's gonna help you out a lot. Yeah. So when you pick up a pistol, you wanna make sure that it will align with the bone structure of your arm and that you're as high on that back strap as you can possibly get. Those are two things that I find challenging to find a pistol, especially getting high on that back strap. With smaller hands, that could be difficult. That's why it really selection is important. Yep. Now, if there's a little gap here, most people don't understand that this is a big deal. That's a tremendously big deal, that mm -hmm. small little gap, because it's gonna give recoil a place to go. The same as if you grip in some manner like this, like a kind of thumb over thumb thing, mm -hmm. you're gonna have recoil uh, tending to uh, take your muzzle up this way because it's the path of least resistance. So again, what we're trying to do is have that 360 degree inward pressure. We're high up on the back strap. Our bone structure is behind the gun. We're punching out. Now our thumbs are, are facing toward the target, but here my thumbs could be facing toward the target, but that's a terrible grip. Yeah. So you can't just rely on where your thumbs are pointing. You have to do these 
things right as you establish your grip. Now, why it's important to have your thumbs pointing toward the grip is because you need to be canting this wrist. That's gonna make it a lot stronger. Mm -hmm. It's not this, it's this. And this hand is applying mainly front to back pressure, but it's not just front to back, it's this type of pressure, the same camming that your other hand's doing. When you do that, so in other words, my pinky's pulling back, this is pressing forward, it really gets that tight vice-like grip. And this uh, void here is where this other hand's gonna go, and I just come up on target and I can get good hits there. If you'll notice, there's a bend in my arm too, Courtney. Mm -hmm. I want recoil to kind of do this. I don't wanna be like this and have recoil do this. Yeah, that's gonna make it a lot slower to get back on target. It will. So here, I wanna be locked in tight. I got my good grip. And when I'm controlling recoil properly, mm -hmm. it's like the front sight will center almost in the same spot. So it really makes it much easier to aim and to get rapid, accurate hits. So as a female shooter, you have smaller hands mm -hmm. and you have some challenges when it comes to this yeah. stuff. Yeah, you know, like I had said, getting high up on the back strap can be challenging. I don't have as much meat there to, <laughs> to fill in that void, so I definitely have to concentrate on that. You know, a smaller gun definitely helps. Um, and then making sure that there's not a ton of room from back to front here because you don't want to be torquing your hand around and having something funky trying to reach the trigger. So making sure that I'm high up on the back strap and that it's, of course, aligned well. This is the Ruger LCP Max, and this is a great option for me. It's small, it's light, and I can shoot it pretty well because I actually still have a full grip on this gun. And the recoil is manageable on this. Um, but a challenge that somebody like you might have or somebody with really large hands is you might not be able to get all your fingers on that grip, you know? If you have large hands, two fingers might be a challenge. That's gonna really be a problem, uh, Courtney, when it comes to recoil control, because like I said, this pinky applying that downward pressure is critical. So if that pinky is not on the grip, yeah. you're really gonna be struggling. So again, optimally, you'll have a full firing grip and that's gonna depend on your hand size, yeah. right? What, what grip is gonna be the best for you? And you have that good high up on the back strap grip. You have that 360 degree inward pressure. And I'm gripping tighter than I think I need to. Mm -hmm. My offhand is like it's crushing a ball. And that's really the one that needs to be super tight to really manage recoil. See how I'm shaking just a little bit here? Yeah. So that's what we're looking for. Not necessarily to the point of shaking, but maybe just a little bit less than that. Mm -hmm. That's gonna make sure that you have that really tight grip, which is gonna be required for controlling recoil. Exactly, and you notice like your gun, like you've said before, it doesn't go up high, it's really straight back, and that's what you're going for. That's right, Courtney. In the next segment, Scott and I are gonna take these principles that we just covered, and we're gonna look at how we can practice those to become proficient. Handguns and Defensive Weapons is brought to you by Norma Ammunition. Handguns and Defensive Weapons is brought to you by Ruger. Scott, here at the Gunsight Academy, one of the ways they teach students to control recoil is with controlled pairs and double taps. But before we talk about that, we should probably talk about delivering a single shot on target or multiple single shots on target. So I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna get a good sight picture, nice trigger press, there's a good shot and a second good shot. Now those were at a slower pace, they were individual shots. So a controlled pair, you're still getting two sight pictures, actually three because after the second shot, I'm getting a sight picture again, but it's at a faster clip. So it would look like this. So those were both aimed, but it was faster than the single shots I was shooting before. Then we work our way up to what's called a double tap. So with the double tap, I'm firing a little faster. I'm getting a sight picture initially, but I'm not getting a second sight picture for my second round. That'll look like this. So as you can see, I threw that one a little bit left. So maybe my grip was just a little bit off that time. Well, and you know, these are drills that you can work on pretty much at any range, anywhere. You don't need special targets. And they're good building blocks, like you said. And I see people working at the range and everybody wants to go lightning fast, like they're in like some old west gunfight. So so I've got my Smith & Wesson MP9 compact here, which is my personal gun, and I train with this one a fair bit. The, the whole thing starts with 
the grip. You know, don't get in a hurry and just grabbing the gun because you're not gonna have a good foundation if you blow this part, right? So I wanna come in, I wanna get my good grip. I draw it, I'm not drawing fast because I don't care, right? I wanna make sure my hands are together. That's gonna help That there's no recoil. gap and I'm camming forward. So I punch out and let, I'll do uh, a control pair, so. Right? Two sight pictures, Two so sight actually pictures. three. Yep. And gun felt solid, which is what I'm looking for. Double tap, not so good, but still rounds on target. Very viable rounds. And that's, you're taking a shooter from the very basics of delivering effective single shots on target to now controlling recoil and firing multiple rounds on target. But we can even amp it up a little bit more, right, Scott? Right, there's a drill called the bill drill, and I, I won't go into all the specifics about targets and time and all that, but basically it's six shots as fast as you can go. So again, I'm not gonna rush the draw. Draw is part of the drill, but I'm not gonna rush it. I'm gonna make sure I get everything right. Delivered my six shots, and I went fast, but I never went so fast as I didn't feel like I was in control, and I was able to like monitor, self-monitor myself. Is the gun squirming in my hand? Am I losing position? If it is, you know, you got to dial it back until when you do a build drill or a double tap or whatever, that that gun feels so solid in your hand that you know you're controlling that recoil. If you're not diagnosing the problems as you're shooting, you're just wasting bullets, right? You have to be able to realize, did I have good, good grip or my mechanics there? And if everything's right, you should be able to fire multiple rounds and contain them in a relatively small area. And so these are some simple things that you can work on at pretty much any range to improve your recoil control skills. Here we have the Ruger Max 9 featuring the factory mounted Crimson Trace Compact Reflex Sight. This sight features a red 3MOA dot that auto adjusts based on the lighting. It also comes with a tritium fiber optic front sight, which is gonna be bright and noticeable during the day, but it's also gonna glow in the dark at night, so it's gonna be the best of both worlds. You also have uh, the ability to co-witness, and what that means is that if your battery dies on your red dot, you can still use your factory iron sights looking through, so you have an effective pistol. It's chambered in nine millimeter, and with a width just under an inch at 0.95, it's not much wider than that of a single stack pistol, but it has a standard capacity of 10 plus one and an extended magazine featuring a 12 plus one capacity. The barrel length on this is nice and short, concealable at 3.2 inches, and it only weighs a little over a pound at 18.4 ounces. Striker fired, so it has a nice smooth trigger pull with a quick short reset. With an MSRP of only 709, this is a pistol with a factory mounted red dot that you can afford to have. Handguns and Defensive Weapons is brought to you by Sig Sauer. Handguns and Defensive Weapons is brought to you by Smith & Wesson. Revolvers like this Taurus Model 605 are excellent self-defense tools. People have been using revolvers for self-defense for decades. They're ultimately reliable. They're very easy to understand. The manual of arms is very simple. This is a double action, single action revolver, so I can fire it in double action mode, where when I press the trigger to the rear, the hammer cocks and releases firing around. Or I can fire it in single action mode, where I cock the hammer, and you'll note how much less of a trigger press I'll need now. That's gonna make for a lighter trigger press, a shorter trigger press, and it's more conducive to accurate fire. Now the Achilles heel of revolvers is that they hold fewer rounds than most semi-automatic pistols, and they also are much more difficult to load. This uh, revolver holds five rounds, which is pretty typical. So if I'm loading from the pocket, for instance, I have to load each uh, chamber of this cylinder individually, and it's not that difficult to do now, but can you imagine trying to do this under duress when your fine motor skills are diminished? So here I'm loaded, I'm coming up on target, All right, good hits on target there. So now what I wanna do is I gotta reload this thing. So the first thing I have to do is 
press in on the cylinder release and I stick my middle and ring finger all the way through swinging that uh, cylinder out. I'm gonna invert this revolver now and I either use my thumb or the heel of my hand on that ejector rod and then I'm gonna bring this revolver in close where I have more dexterity to work on it. I'm gonna use this HKS reloader and all I'm gonna do is align the bullets with the chambers in the cylinder, turn it just a little bit, and now I've loaded the entire cylinder at once. Now there may come a time when you don't wanna dump this because you have rounds in here that you think you may need. So what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm gonna use my thumb to depress the ejector rod slightly. I'm just gonna pull out those e uh, spent casings. I'm gonna take a quick strip and I'm gonna put it here just like this and just peel this away. I would keep that if I didn't have a table here to hold it for me and then I'm back up and in fight. Revolvers are very effective self-defense tools, but you need to practice reloading them. You can find information like this in my On Guard column in each issue of Handguns Magazine. You know, recoil management can be challenging, and we looked at a lot of different aspects of that and ways to kind of tame that down, you know, from caliber to gun size and weight, making sure that it fits your hand really well. It's gonna be important. And fortunately, it's easy to work on. You can train you know, your recoil control skills through a couple of simple drills. The key is don't rush it. You know, work on your fundamentals while you're working on your recoil control. That's right, and when it comes to recoil control, the most important thing is your grip. You want to have that good 360 degree inward pressure on that pistol so it comes down right where you want it to from shot to shot. Make sure you're practicing recoil control so you can get fast and accurate rounds on target.